everybody, it's Evelyn with Cats Play Art. Today I'm going to do a strainer pour. I realize I've never done one, and uh, or at least not on camera. So I thought, well, today is going to be the day I'm going to do a strainer pour. And I'll save the colors as I go. This is Deco Art Metallic Pearl White. I'm going to start with that. And I just mixed this up. Um, I got some mixed up, but it's uh, mixed really thin for a Dutch pour. And for a strainer pour, you need a little bit thicker paint. So I mixed some up real quick. I've got most of it in a bottle, but didn't all fit. <laughs> so make a nice coat of there. And then I'm going to do Liquid Text Basics fluorescent pink. I should add a nice little pop of color. And then uh, Deco Art Extreme Sheen Sapphire. bit more of the pearl white and um, let's do folk art color shift purple and I'm layering these in the cup I'm squirting them over the top of one another um, and then Let's do Folk Art Tartar Gold Blue Quartz. I don't want too much of that because it has a tendency to take over a painting, I'll tell you. Um, and then I've got a new color, uh, Deco Art Extreme Sheen Pink Tourmaline. Isn't that a beautiful color? Just so beautiful. Um, I just got this in uh, with my latest delivery from Michaels, and I thought, well, I've got to, I've got to use it in a painting. A um, little bit more of the pearl white, and let's do some folk art emerald. And again, this is the color shift, and it has a gold sheen to it. Putting my cats back on. Uh, go back to the blue, uh, the sapphire, because I love the look of green and blue next to one another. And then some more of the fluorescent pink. And some purple. the white and the blue quartz I'm doing kind of thin layers because I don't want any one color to take over and then the uh, pink tourmaline I still think is a gorgeous gorgeous color um, and some more of the white And some more pink. And some blue. The one thing I don't want to do is put the pink and the green together. That would be bad. And the emerald. And the blue 
quartz. Right. I think I went in. So all my paints are on a thicker side. I'm gonna end with that white. Yeah, I think I'm gonna end with the white. Let me put caps back on. I'm gonna reach back and grab my Dutch pour white so I can t uh, spread some around on the sides if I need it. canvas down closer to me so it's a little bit more centered in the screen and let's get a port And the key to this is kind of a slow and steady stream. I'm probably going a little too fast. You don't want to overflow your strainer, but you want to keep the pressure up so the paint flows out of the strainer. And I'm pouring on a 12 by 12 canvas. As you can see, as the paint comes out of the strainer, it starts forming these really cool patterns. Normally I would put this on a sp spinner, but to be honest, I just didn't feel like setting up the whole spinner. I can, it's only a 12 by 12 canvas. Oh, look at the inside of that cup. So pretty. Let that drain out. Okay, it's almost done. Take my strainer and slowly lift up, letting the paint drain as I do. And you'll notice. I've got an empty cup. I put my strainer in an empty cup. I did that uh, this uh, the, whenever I did the uh, um, funnel pour. It just keeps my work area a little bit nicer. I'm going to go around this with a little of the little thin Dutch pour white. So it spreads easier. Get my corners. Edge of the canvas here. Because although I want to stretch the paint out, I don't want to lose all the design.
torch this. Pop those bubbles. Get that paint thinking about forming cells. Now comes the fun part. Let's stretch. Now I'm not worried about my side because I know my paint will run over the side. I'm gonna stretch this real slowly. I'm gonna bring it to the edge and then bring it back to center. Take it down to the edge and then bring it back. off to the side and then bring it back to center. Whenever you're stretching a painting, especially something like this, you always want to bring the weight of the paint back to center. That way, whenever you go to stretch, it's stretching from the center point and not, not where the paint uh, weight of the paint was it the uh, corner or the side? I'll wipe a little bit of the paint off my fingers. Okay. I'm going to turn my canvas and slowly stretch to the corner. Starting to go off. And then come back to the center. I should have plenty of paint. To cover this canvas. At least I hope I do. Stretching back to the opposite corner. Bring it back to the center. For some reason I've got a glob of really thin paint just floating around in the center of my painting. I don't know why that's doing that, but it's making kind of a cool design. Turning it again. Stretching it back out this corner and we'll paint back. I said, I, I'm not sure why I have a real thin, some really thin paint right in the center that's kind of floating around and making odd designs, but I've never seen my paint do that, but adding interest This corner. Okay, bringing back to the center. Gonna tilt it back toward me because I didn't get this corner that's toward me or the corner opposite me really well because I didn't want to drop off too much paint. Center. Before I got got it, the canvas covered, so I'm tilting back opposite me. I'm going to start to go over. I think it may be done. Ooh, I just put my finger in the side of the painting. Yeah, I think it's done. I think I've stretched it as much. Bring it back. Well, I kind of lost some of my really cool detail. I'm not sure why. Um, but this corner I'm going to dab some of the colored paint. I think I got too much white on my hand. Of course, the white is what 
touch my hand first, so that's what the majority of my paint on my hand is, is the white. So put some color on that corner. It doesn't touch up in the areas, like where I put my finger it by accident. On the spot there. I think I got everything on that side. And my torch. Torch it one more time. See if I can get any cells coming up. We are not. I'm still. I can see air bubbles popping. Even though I've torched it once to pop bubbles. But that's natural. As I said, I don't know what that was, but it's kind of a cool effect. Kind of lost my hot pink. I probably shouldn't have used the uh, gold quartz or the blue quartz because it has a tendency to kind of take over and that's what it's done again. But it is kind of cool looking. It kind of looks like a spider in the middle. Uh, let me put you on pause. Go wash the rest of the paint off my hand. And uh, I'll bring you down for a closer look. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. Here's a closer look. See on this one little center right here, for some reason the paint, that green paint just kind of like did this runny like it was thinner than the rest, but it made this really cool bug design, which I, it gives a lot of interest. Um, I got some cells. I, I, I didn't get as many as I anticipated. Uh, and it, it, close up, you can see that, that although blue quartz is a beautiful, beautiful color, uh, don't get me wrong, it kind of took over the entire painting. And I lost a lot of my pink and red to that blue quartz. So, but live and learn. We'll see how it dries. But I think my favorite part of the painting, sorry for the fast, is the bug in the middle. It just looks like some alien bug creature. I, I actually really like it. Anyway, this is Evelyn with Cats Play Art. Uh, if, please make a comment if you feel. Uh, like this video and hit subscribe uh, if you aren't a subscriber already. You have a great day. Bye.